This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey guys and welcome to All About Linux. Today, due to many requests on the All About Linux Discord server, link is in the description, I will be installing a Linux distro on my laptop and using it as a daily driver. In case you didn't know, I have never really used Linux as a daily driver and I mostly use Windows. My daily laptop is a Lenovo Yoga SM40 14IRL. It comes with a quad core Intel i7 1065G7, 16GB of RAM, and a NVIDIA MX250 GPU with 2GB of GDDR5 VRAM. Initially, I was planning to use Fedora 33 Workstation as my distro of choice. Everything didn't really work well. The trackpad wouldn't work half the time, my IR face unlocked with Howdy didn't work for a lock-in screen, and the final nail in the coffin for Fedora was the NVIDIA proprietary driver's installation breaking the entire system. Do let me know down in the comments if you would like to see a guide of how I installed Howdy for a terminal in Fedora 33. Anyways, I decided to go for Ubuntu 20.10 instead of Fedora 33 in this video. All links and things I use will be available in the description. So, I started off by making an install USB with the ISO file, then shrinking my Windows 10 partition to make some space for Ubuntu. The install went pretty well, although I had to do manual partitioning as my Windows drive is BitLocker encrypted, but it was as easy as making an ext4 root partition, some swap space, and setting grub to be installed on the Windows boot manager partition. After that, I proceeded to boot into the new Ubuntu installation and I was surprised that it actually went well and it booted up just fine. Right off the bat, I found 4 problems with Ubuntu running on my laptop. Firstly, there was no support for my Windows Hello IR face unlock. Next, my trackpad would work intermittently but a reboot or two would usually fix it. Thirdly, a few function keys did not work the brightness up or down keys, the lock key, the camera disable key, and a few others. Lastly, I usually use my laptop with another monitor, but my laptop screen is in 4K resolution, while my monitor screen is in 2K resolution. Unlike Windows where it is possible to set different scaling for each monitor, it seems that Ubuntu on X does not allow for that, but I will talk more about this issue later in the video. I also was not able to encrypt my Ubuntu partition as earlier tries resulted in Ubuntu breaking itself after a software update. But with today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, I am able to browse the internet securely and encrypted. Surfshark VPN protects your privacy and security online, unblocks geo restricted content like certain Netflix libraries with features like its ultra fast 1700 plus servers in 63 countries industry-leading encryption, ad blocker, and many others. It works on an unlimited number of devices, from Android and iOS to Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, to Chrome and Firefox extensions. Best of all, you can get Surfshark VPN today for the first 3 months free, then 83% off for just $2.21 per month. Do head over to the affiliate link surfshark.deal slash allaboutlinux and get Surfshark today. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I started off by fixing the IR face unlock issue. I found a program named Howdy on GitHub, which could utilize the IR cameras for face unlock in GNOME or KDE when requiring authentication. It works in the terminal, in authentication windows, and even in the login screen. That was just what I needed, so I followed the steps on GitHub to install it. However, I quickly found out that the IR emitter was not turning on when the IR camera was being used. This would have caused Howdy to not be able to scan my face if not for a wonderful tool called Chikani IR Toggle, also on GitHub, which basically helps to turn on the IR emitter for a handful of Lenovo devices, including mine. And that was it, just a few steps and I got IR face unlocked to work. At this point, I wanted to install WG Resolve, my video editor of choice on Ubuntu. As it started up, I often got an error along the lines of could not find any OpenCL G capable GPUs. Strange, isn't it? WG Resolve worked flawlessly on my Windows 10 installation, 
but it had this error on Linux. I soon found out that Dimitri Resolve needed NVIDIA proprietary drivers to be installed. So I used the pre-installed software and updates app to easily change my open source Nuva drivers to the proprietary drivers. After a reboot, DaVinci Resolve still had issues. Now, it was starting up just fine, but it was way too small to see, mostly due to its lack of support for high DPI displays like my laptop display. After looking through a few tutorials online, I made a shell script that would force scaling for DaVinci Resolve and use the chmod plus x command to make it executable, then set it to be executed when the DaVinci Resolve icon is clicked on by modifying the .desktop file. Now DaVinci Resolve starts at 2x scaling, which is great. Problem solved. Next, I proceeded to solve the trackpad issue. Using an app called Mainline, which can easily install your kernel of choice, I chose to install the kernel 5.10.2, which had fixed trackpad problems on Fedora 33. However, after a reboot, although my trackpad was working flawlessly, I realized that my NVIDIA proprietary drivers were not compatible with the Mainline kernels which basically broke DaVinci Resolve, so I had to revert back to the official kernel 5.8.0. Here's my word of advice. If you use NVIDIA proprietary drivers, use the official Ubuntu kernel. For the function keys issue, it seems like there is still no fix for that, and I will update you all if I find one. The lack of brightness function keys is a slight bummer, but I can still use the GNOME status bar to adjust brightness. Lastly, there is a dual monitors issue. This is sort of an edge case, as not many people have two monitors with different resolutions. But you might say, just use Wayland, it supports individual monitor scaling. It would work for most cases, but NVIDIA proprietary drivers are only for X. I also do not want to sacrifice any resolution by setting my laptop screen to 2K. If you have any solutions to these dual monitors with different DPI issue, do let me know down in the comments. So, in conclusion, my first impressions of setting up Linux as a daily driver is that it is actually pretty fun. Having to set up things yourself, face problems, and solve them, it might not be for all people, but I certainly found it very fun. But one thing that makes me want to go back to Windows 10 is a dual monitor individual scaling support. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.